Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll show you a tutorial on how to create a Gantt chart in the Node-RED Dashboard 2.0. Using the Dashboard 2.0 palette, we'll utilize the Markdown node to build the Gantt chart I'll demonstrate. Before we begin, don't forget to like, and subscribe. Thank you. Here are the reference websites I used for creating this tutorial video. First, the FlowFuse website, which provides documentation on using the Markdown node. In Markdown, we'll use syntax from mermaid.js. Second, the mermaid.js.org official website, which explains how to use mermaid syntax, especially for creating Gantt charts. For more detailed information, feel free to visit these reference websites. In this tutorial video, I used Gantt chart data generated by Siemens Opcenter Advanced Scheduling Software. Opcenter Advanced Scheduling is a family of production planning and scheduling software products that help you better orchestrate manufacturing processes. Opcenter Scheduling provides an accurate model of the production environment. This helps you increase resource utilization and on-time delivery. You can also use other data sources or create your own data directly in a database. This is the database used by Siemens Upcenter Scheduling Software. The database is SQL Server. In Upcenter Scheduling, the Gantt chart data is located in the Orders table. From the Orders table, we will extract data to create a Gantt chart in Node Red. This ensures that the Gantt chart in Upcenter Scheduling matches the one displayed in Node Red. The columns required for creating the Gantt chart in Node Red are order number, resource, start time, and end time. For the resource names, these are available in the Resources table within Siemens Upcenter Scheduling. You can create your own data as practice for making a Gantt chart. In this example, the Gantt chart focuses on operation scheduling. On the flow page, add a markdown node from the Dashboard 2.0 palette. Next, in the page field, create a new page, and add a group within that page to place this markdown node. This markdown node will display the Gantt chart in the Dashboard 2.0 interface. Next, before displaying the Gantt chart with data from the database, I'll first show you how to write Mermaid syntax in the Markdown node to display a sample Gantt chart. We'll use the code from the mermaid.js.org website. After copying and pasting the code into the Markdown node, you'll be able to view the Gantt chart on the Dashboard 2.0. And here is the result of the sample Gantt chart displayed using the Markdown node on Dashboard 2.0. Alright, now we're moving on to creating a Gantt chart using data from the database. For this example, we'll use the database from Siemens Upcenter Scheduling Software, which contains all the necessary information to generate the chart. To make this interactive, I'll start by adding two buttons to the flow. The first button will act as a trigger to fetch data from the database. Once the data is retrieved, it will be displayed as a Gantt chart in the Markdown node on the dashboard. The second button will serve as a reset function, allowing us to clear the Gantt chart from the dashboard whenever needed. This setup ensures flexibility and makes it easier to manage the chart display dynamically. Next, from the Show button node, I will add an MSSQL node to execute a query and retrieve data from the database. Make sure to correctly configure the database connection, including the IP address, port, username, password, and database name. In this query, I'll fetch the necessary data from the orders table to populate the Gantt chart. To check if the data is being successfully retrieved, I will add a debug node. This will allow us to see the contents of the payload generated by the MSSQL node and verify if the data is fetched correctly, as well as understand the format of the resulting data array. Here is the result from the payload generated by the MSSQL node. The data has been successfully retrieved using the query we applied, but it's still separated by each order number. 
This means that the data is returned in a format where each order's information is isolated, and we need to organize or group the data correctly to display it as a single cohesive Gantt chart. Next, we'll add a function node to group the order data based on the resource name. In the JavaScript code I'll add here, I'll calculate the duration in hours by subtracting the start time from the end time. This will give us the total time for each order in hours. Additionally, I will group the order data based on the resource name. This grouping will help organize the data, making it easier to generate the Gantt chart for each resource and visualize the operations clearly on the chart. This step is crucial for properly displaying the Gantt chart in a structured and readable format. When the show button is pressed, you can check the debug tab to see the payload generated by the function node. At this point, the data has been grouped by resource name, so each resource name will have multiple order no values, arranged according to their start time in the order of execution. Additionally, the duration is now included in the data, represented in hours, which was calculated by subtracting start time from end time. This structure makes it easier to visualize the Gantt chart, as it organizes the data in a way that reflects the schedule and durations of each resource's tasks. Next, I will add another function node. In this JavaScript code, I will create a variable called Gantt, which will contain the mermaid syntax for displaying the Gantt chart on the markdown node. Once this is done, I will connect the output of this function node to the markdown node, and modify the content of the markdown node to ensure that the mermaid syntax inside it is sourced from the payload sent by the function node. This will allow us to dynamically generate the Gantt chart based on the data, and display it in the markdown node on the dashboard 2.0. After deploying the flow, let's run a test to see if the code works correctly. On the node red dashboard 2.0, Press the Show Gantt Chart button, and you should see that the Gantt Chart has been successfully generated and displayed. This confirms that the data has been properly processed and the Gantt Chart is now being dynamically created on the dashboard. Next, we will add a Change node to the Clear button. In this Change node, we will set the payload to be an empty array. When the Clear button is pressed, this will send the empty array to the connected nodes, effectively clearing the Gantt Chart from the dashboard. This allows you to reset the chart and start fresh whenever needed. Now, let's check if the Gantt chart displayed on the node red dashboard matches the one in the UpCenter advanced scheduling software. By comparing the charts, we can confirm that the Gantt chart shown on the dashboard is accurate and correctly reflects the data stored in the database. This ensures that the data visualization in node red is consistent with the data from the UpCenter advanced scheduling system. In this video, we demonstrated how to create a dynamic Gantt chart in Node Red Dashboard 2.0 using data from Siemens UpCenter Advanced Scheduling Software. We walk through the process of fetching data from the SQL database, grouping it by resource, and generating the Gantt chart using Mermaid syntax in a markdown node. We also added functionality with buttons to show and clear the chart, ensuring it updates accurately. By the end, we confirmed that the Gantt chart displayed in Node Red is consistent with the data in the UpCenter system. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.